Welcome back to Relax RV. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm doing a podcast on stress while RVing. And I know none of you have ever experienced anything stressful while RVing. Well, perhaps a little bit. Now, stress means different things to different people. And what stresses one person out may just make another person laugh. And for that, I'm jealous. So let's talk about stress and RVing. Welcome back, everybody. Paul Sebastian, RVer, retired nurse, podcaster. Uh, So this is Season 2, Episode 73, recorded, released February 20th. 2022. So welcome to all you new listeners out there. Welcome back to all the long time listeners. Um, Each month the number of episode downloads just takes off. So thank you. Um, So I just finished recording the last episode and uh I went to bring some firewood up from the back for the house and I was going to go move the RV and uh of course the RV lock broke so this is the second time we've had a lock break our first rig broke when we were in Nova Scotia and that was a real fiasco that was a terrible one um, I have a video of that one in the show notes, a link to the video uh, in the show notes here. And this one wasn't so bad. I uh, I climbed in the window, took it apart from the inside, and it was very easy to get the lock out. It was not so easy getting the first one. So, um, I have a link to the video on this one in the show notes also. Um, you know, when it happened, this isn't what I had planned to do that day. Um, but as in life and with RVs, things get in the way, right? So... I just took a deep breath and said, okay, I'll deal with this as it unfolds. Um, So I went online and I looked at uh, the digital combination locks and uh, talked to the company about their locks and just decided it wasn't worth the extra money. Um, It was like double the price of a regular lock. This one costs like, I don't know, a little over a hundred bucks. 110 or something. Um, I ordered it from... uh, I don't even remember where. It was a month ago. I don't have it in my show notes here. Oh well. So anyway, took a nice deep breath and just started dealing with it. And uh, took it as it unfolded. And like I said, it wasn't a bad disassembly compared to the first one so got the lock out waited a few days for the new one to come in put it in um i had contacted um e-trailer to ask them what size lock for this rig and they didn't answer my question they they just uh replied that was going to be in a big loop of look at this you know website and you can enter your rig and all that and I did but it didn't say exactly this rig so as it turns out the lock is a little smaller so um, on the outside where some of the stripes are on the door they don't you know match up exactly 
and we're not obsessive about stuff like that, so, oh well, what can you do? Um, so, prior to that, I had started to rip out the valance in the living room. Um, we took out the two valance, we have two um, main windows in the bedroom. We took those out, we put curtains up, and we really love it. So in the living room, um, in Christmas we were down in Jersey watching Washington Cross and the Delaware reenactment. And uh, we were sitting in the living room at night, and it wasn't like bitterly cold, but it was, you know, in the upper 30s. And um, I guess for some of you that's bitterly cold. (laughs) We could feel a draft coming in, so we talked about you know, maybe ripping out the valance in the living room behind our recliners and put in a curtain. And we decided, why don't we put in a heavier insulated curtain instead of, you know, like the frilly ones in the uh, bedroom. So, I started ripping that (laughs) valance system apart and... Um, when we first bought this rig, um, there's a video on all the improvements I did to this rig, and one of them was I moved the light switch, which was overhead by the front door, and Trish could barely reach it, so I had moved the light switch down and mounted it on the valance. So now, I need to move the light switch again, get it off the valance. Which opens up a whole nother can of worms. You know, again, this is RVing, so it's always a can of worms, isn't it? Um, so, I went on uh, Amazon. I found uh, so I. <laughs> I went on Amazon to find a light switch um, box that would hold, an extension box that would hold the light switch further off the wall, because now it was going to be wall mounted, and um, the other one I had cut a hole into the valance for the wires to protrude out the back, so... I got the extension box, but then, of course, the faceplate doesn't match that, so I bought a faceplate, and then that doesn't match the three-way switch, because the lights are on a three-way switch. Um, So, once again, I contacted E-Trailer, and uh, they they couldn't find a light switch that would work because there isn't one, so I just uh, cut out the center of the faceplate, and I'll make it all fit and look pretty. So, then, with the wires, we had them hidden behind the valance for the light switch, so um, I needed to buy some conduit, and figure out where I'm going to put the light switch and by the front door and I just have to mount everything now so and then I still have to rip out the the valance off of the wall (coughs) and mount the shade onto the wall because it was originally mounted to the top of the valance so I'll get all that done in the next week or so, and I'll do a video on it, I guess, and uh, we'll go from there. So, it's winter, it's February, it's cold. We had taken delivery of our snowmobile, and uh, we wanted to get some snowmobiling in. So... Uh, we weren't getting any snow around us, <laughs> so we went up to Forestport, New York, for a few days. We were talking about taking the rig up. Um, the last rig we were, did winter camping, it was five below zero. We did have a pipe freeze. Thank goodness it didn't burst. Um, 
but we've come to realize, you know, these RVs, yeah, we we could do a winter trip with it, and we could do negative five, um, but we wanted it to be focused on snowmobiling, not focused on preventing problems with an RV or dealing with problems with an RV. We also looked at the gas, so we were planning a three-day trip, and it was about three and a half, excuse me, <clears throat> about three and a half hours from here. So we looked at the gas mileage of the RV, even with the five-star tuner, we're getting um, 10 miles to the gallon in our Class A, which is not bad at all. However, the gas to get up there and then looking for a campground that's open is difficult and or finding a boondockers welcome that we love. Um, we love boondockers welcome, staying in people's properties. There's a link to that in the show notes too uh, if you're not familiar. So there was nothing really convenient, no locations really convenient, and we figured we're, between the cost of the gas to get up there, we could just do an Airbnb for about the same amount of money and then not have to worry about the RV. So that's what we ended up doing, um, and we fell in love with snowmobiling. That's our new RV, <laughs> recreational vehicle, right? Um... So then we did another trip to the Catskills, a day trip, and then we went for another day trip to Ringwood State Park in New Jersey, and then another one um, to Stewart Field in Newburgh, New York, and then another one to Montgomery, New York. Um, there's a county park over there, an Orange County Park. And then we went out to Pennsylvania to Promised Land State Park. That was another day trip snowmobiling. Then we saw the Adirondacks was going to get dumped on with 11 inches of snow, so we planned a trip to Lake George, New York. Um, and I have pictures from a couple of these places on my Instagram account, uh, Relax RV Podcast and Instagram, and there's links in the show notes. So we had booked four nights up in Lake George, and uh, we went with a hotel. So being we're retired, snowmobile trails, just like RV parks, get more crowded on the weekends. <clears throat> so we like to do things during the week. So all these trips was during the week. And... Uh, we figured a hotel wouldn't be bad up in Lake George during a week in February, and it wasn't. It was really quiet. Um, but we realized when we travel with the snowmobile, it's kind of like when we travel with the RV. Um, we, we're we not like most people. Most people like to go back to the same places and... Um, you know, become familiar, and it's very easy to plan. You just pick your dates and go, right? We're not like most people. <laughs> and if you know us personally, you will agree with that. Um, so what we like to do is explore areas. Um, if we're in one area too long, like a few days, we get very bored. And it turns out with snowmobiling, it's the same thing. If we're riding the same trails for, you know, two or three days, we get bored of those trails and we want to find something new. So we cut that trip short by a day instead of four nights. We did three nights and it was perfect. Um, I have pictures of Prospect Mountain with the snowmobile and, you know, there's links again in the... Uh, show notes so after that we came home for about a week or so and then the following week we went up to Tupper Lake New York and we had previously booked four nights at an Airbnb but we contacted the host and changed it down to three and again that was a great choice um so we're really enjoying exploring different areas in a different way 
Um, but we are really looking forward 